Welcome back to Viewer Beware. It's a series where we go over each episode of the original Goosebumps TV show, give you some background information, some thoughts, you know, we're having fun, we're having a little, little, little bit of fun. But today is not very fun, because we're going over My Hairiest Adventure. It's a bit of a low light for the first season. It's, uh, you know, they can't all be bangers. Can't, can't be banging all the time. It's a story about a kid growing weird body hair, and it's basically Teen Wolf, minus all the things that make Teen Wolf cool. Nobody's playing basketball or surfing on vans. It's uh, mostly just running. As a bit of a fun fact, this is the only episode of the entire series directed by Michael Short and written by David Wary Smith. This is probably because it's written and directed very badly. We're gonna need to break out the big boys as we tune in to My Hairiest Adventure. It's such a sus name, I don't know why they chose that, but let's roll the tape. I'd like to meet the guy who said dogs are a man's best friend. We open with our hero Larry running for his life from a pack of dogs. Apparently this happens all the time, but luckily he's saved by his mush mouth friend Lily. I don't know Larry, maybe they smell your fear. Gee thanks, like I needed to hear that. After the dog attack, Larry and Lily meet up with their band and start practicing in an empty house. They sound terrible. Solo! Jerry. Jerry. While practicing, they discover a bottle of instant tan that gives you an instant tan. Instant tan. Gives you an instant tan. Hey, cool. Naturally, they all smear this mystery cream all over themselves. Mm -hmm. Was real good. But Larry needs some added peer pressure. You guys are stupid. You don't even know where that stuff came from. Harry Larry, king of the wimps. Now, his friends mock him by calling him Harry Larry, and this gets under his skin for no discernible reason. That's because in the book, Larry was very vain about his hair and appearance. When they adapted this episode, they left that whole part of his character out, but left the insults in. After they start rubbing the lotion in, one of them discovers that the lotion actually expired five years ago. Larry then takes this opportunity to trick his friends into thinking it melted his skin off. Ah! My skin! Look! My skin! <sighs> you guys are stupid. Psych! A cool prank, brother. The friends then try to get payback by spraying him with some kind of cans. It sounds like spray paint, but it looks like soda. Who knows what it is? But Larry ends up fainting and waking up at home with his doctor shooting him up with a comically large syringe. The doctor says if Larry gets too overheated, his allergies act up, which requires a turkey baster of mystery goo to be shot into his arm. It should be noted that the doctor's name is Dr. Merkin, and if you didn't know, a Merkin is a wig made for the pubic area. Just a little fun fact. That night, Larry dumps exposition onto his cat Jasper Recapping the episode up to this point. After Larry has his one-on-one -on -one with Jasper, he discovers that his hand has sprouted a large patch of hair and runs to the bathroom to take care of it. He asks his parents through the door if they have any hair remover before ultimately settling on an electric razor. When his parents ask what's going on, he refuses to elaborate any further and just continues shaving. You guys are stupid. The next day, Larry meets up with Lily and explains that their friend Manny has gone missing. But this conversation gets sidetracked by Larry asking Lily if she has seen any strange body hair. Are you growing some unexpected hair? No, are you? No, are you? Which out of context is some next level perv behavior. Eventually Larry and Lily make it to Manny's house and discover that there is nothing in the house except for his bed and a strange man in a suit hiding in his closet. <laughs> tells the kids that the family moved out and he is selling the house. That night Larry goes to Lily's house for dinner but discovers he has more hair sprouting out of his hands which is shedding into the food. After slapping the corn a bit, Larry fakes having a diarrhea attack to run into the bathroom and jump out the window. But the neighborhood dogs are sitting in the yard waiting for him. Rather than admit to blowing up the toilet, Larry takes his chances with the dogs. After getting home, Larry looks for more hair and discovers he suddenly has leg hair of a grown man and screams in terror. 
This prompts his parents to call a doctor who assures them that the tanning lotion had nothing to do with it and claims that it is a skin irritation due to nerves for his band audition. Larry goes to sleep despite his concerns and wakes up to all of his body hair falling off. Relieved that he seems to be back to normal, he walks to Lily's place and discovers a dog that has her same eyes and pendant. After seeing her parents, he asks where she is, and they claim that Lily does not exist while they're packing up their house to leave. Larry runs to his own parents and asks them about it, but they just tell him he's overreacting, which causes him to run away. You guys are stupid. He runs all the way back to the band's practice garage where he discovers a man and his son who are waiting for the band to audition to play a birthday party. Usually, you would just hire a guy to dress up as Spider-Man and hope he isn't too drunk. Is this Spider-Man with the Hennessy bottle? My god, it is. This is actually another change from the book. Originally, they were preparing for a battle of the band's competition, but changed it to a birthday party audition. Anyway, after Larry exerted himself by all the running, his body hair came back in full force, scaring the little boy, and forcing Larry to run back home. By the time he gets back, the hair is all over his body except for his face, causing him to scream. We flash forward to see that Larry has in fact been a dog this whole time. Apparently the strange injections from Dr. Merkin were meant to turn him into a kid, but didn't quite work as all the kids turned back into dogs. We also see that Larry is the dog from the show's intro, and that's pretty neat. As Larry rattles off about how sweet the dog life is, Dr. Merkin pulls back up to his house, delivering a newborn baby. This turns out to be Jasper the cat. My Jasper? Well, well there you have it. That's um, my hairiest adventure. Uh, just a real piece of dog poop. To make matters worse, they didn't even add in the reason why the doctor was turning the animals into kids. In a piece of released supplemental material for the episode, it's explained that the parents in the neighborhood are sterile, so they can't have kids. So they're just turning their pets into their kids, but they do not touch on that in the episode. But the main point is, my hairiest adventure, I got I gots to give it a, a one. A one out of five. You barely get the goose, you're not getting the gander. You feel me? So come back around next time on VHS Dinosaur Go. Like and subscribe. And we'll come back with viewer Beware. Woo!